Hello everybody. In my previous video on specialized plant cells part 1, we discussed the outermost layer of plants, the epidermis tissue. So in today's video, we shall explore the inside of the plant. So come join me in BioWorld. Since we have concluded this in our previous video, today's video will be all about ground tissues. Before you here are microscope images of the stem cross section and the root cross section. Here in the stem cross section, ground tissues like the parenchyma cells are visible here. And over here, you have the colenchyma cells and these red little cells are the sclerenchyma cells. These cells are not specific to the stem. You can also find parenchyma, sclerenchyma and colenchyma in the root. For example, these large cells here are parenchyma cells. However, this layer here that is the endodermis, and over here, which is the parasitical layer, are specific to the root cells. But to start off our discussion, I'll focus first on the parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma cells. Parenchyma cells are distributed in the leaf, stem and root. In the cortex of the stem and the pith of the root, Parenchyma cells appear like in this microscope image. However, the parenchyma cells in the leaf appear as mesophyll cells. Colenchyma cells are found in the leaf mainly concentrated at the midribs of the leaf. In the stem and the root, colenchyma cells are positioned below the epidermis. Likewise, sclerenchyma cells can be found in leaf, stem and root, but they normally are in the vascular bundle. You can also find sclerenchyma cells in the flesh of fruits. This microscope image here shows you a cross section of a fruit where you can see these are the seeds of the fruit and this here is the flesh of the fruit. The purple little dots that you see are the sclerenchyma tissues. Now let's have a look at how structure is related to the function of these cells. Firstly, you will notice that the parenchyma, sclerenchyma and colenchyma cells are closely packed together. Added to that, you find that the parenchyma cells are the largest of the three. So that is why parenchyma cells are very suitable as packing tissues. They are able to occupy large spaces inside the plant. The close arrangement of the sclerenchyma and colenchyma cells make them very strong, suitable for support in plants. However, not all parenchyma cells are closely packed. There are some parenchyma cells that are loosely arranged. For example, in the leaf, the spongy mesophylls are loosely arranged where there is air space in between. This provides for the function of gaseous exchange. We also find parenchyma cells loosely arranged in the stems of aquatic plants. Here in this cross section, you can see there are air pockets in the layers of the parenchyma tissues. These type of parenchyma cells are called aronchyma. A cross section of the stem shows you these air pockets. This loose arrangement enables buoyancy in these aquatic plants. When we look at the individual cells that make up the parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma tissue, we find that they are similar in structure. The shape that they have is known as a polygonal or isodiametric structure. What that means is the cells have many sides. However, there are some specialized parenchyma and sclerenchyma cells that are elongated. You find elongated parenchyma cells in the leaf in the form of the palisade mesophyll. 
Isodiametric sclerenchyma cells are called sclerites. An alternative for the sclerenchyma are the elongated ones called sclerenchyma fibers. Besides having similarity in structure, these three cells also share similarity in cell wall content, whereby the cell wall is made up of cellulose, hemicellulose and pectin. There are also differences in the cell walls of these three cells. The parenchyma has a thin cell wall, whereas the colenchyma has unevenly thickened cell wall. You see, at the corners here, the cell wall has extra cellulose deposited. In the case of sclerenchyma, we find that the cell wall has become lignified, meaning that the cell walls have been added with lignin. If you observe, there are other differences between these cells. For instance, the parenchyma and colenchyma cells show the presence of nucleus, while the sclerenchyma does not have a nucleus. Parenchyma and colenchyma also show presence of cytoplasm, represented in the color blue for parenchyma and the color pink in colenchyma. Added to that, there is a central vacuole in both parenchyma and colenchyma cells. Cytoplasm as well as vacuole added with the nucleus is absent in sclerenchyma. This empty space that you see here is not a vacuole but what we call as a lumen. From here we can conclude that Parenchyma and colenchyma cells are actually living cells, while sclerenchyma are dead cells. Since parenchyma and colenchyma are living cells, they continue to carry out cell metabolism. The presence of the vacuole enables them to function as a storage cell, and the vacuoles also provide turgidity that helps support the plant. The extracellulose in the colenchyma and the lignification in the sclerenchyma also provides added support due to the strength of the cell wall. As mentioned earlier, the extracellulose in the corners of the colenchyma cell wall and the lignification in the sclerenchyma cell wall provides the cell with strength to support the plant, but colenchyma is more suitable for support in young plants, whereas sclerenchyma is suitable for support in adult plants. The reason for this is because since colenchyma is a living cell, it can continue to elongate during cell growth. However, the sclerenchyma is dead so it is unable to elongate and suited for an adult plant that has stopped the elongation process. Besides that, the sclerenchyma also provides rigidity in fruits. One interesting function of the parenchyma is that it can retain its meristematic ability. Although parenchyma is a specialized cell which normally cannot become meristematic, we find that the parenchyma that is located just below the epidermis will become meristematic when the epidermis is damaged. In that instance, the parenchyma will start to become cork cambium. The cork cambium then will divide by mitosis to form a new layer called the cork layer. This involves secondary growth. The parenchyma cells found in the leaf in the form of mesophyll cells can carry out photosynthesis due to the presence of chloroplast. 
we have concluded the structure, function as well as distribution of three ground tissues, parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Let's move on to the balance two ground tissues. These two ground tissues are located around the vascular bundle. The one on the outside is known as the endodermis, that is the pink circle. And on the inside is the parisicle that I have labeled in yellow here. The structure of the parisicle and endodermis is similar to a parenchyma cell. There is the cytoplasm, the nucleus as well as the vacuole, indicating that parisicle and endodermis are both living cells. They have a thin cell wall made up of cellulose, hemicellulose, and pectin. However, the endodermis cell is slightly modified, where we find that the cell wall of the endodermis has a Casparian strip. The Casparian strip is made up of a wax material called suberin. However, the cell wall is not completely covered by the suberin. Instead, the suberin just goes around the cell wall transversely and radially. Since this suberin is not covering the cell wall completely, water is still permeable. Therefore, the endodermis remains a living cell. The role of the endodermis and the parisicle are completely different. The endodermis plays an important role in water uptake at the root. What happens is, during water uptake, minerals also enter the root. But at the endodermis, due to the impermeable Casparian strip, only water is able to diffuse into the rest of the plant by osmosis. The mineral salts will only be transported based on active transport depending on the need of the plant. So in this way, endodermis provides a selective barrier to the movement of water and mineral salt. We learn more about this in semester 2. Meanwhile, the parisicle which is found in the root retains its meristematic activity. In this microscope image, you can see this green layer here is the parisicle layer which has continued to carry out mitosis. So the cells of the parisicle have extended to form outside the root. This new extension is the lateral root. So you can see in this picture, these small tiny root hairs are actually lateral roots. So that's the end of our discussion on structure, function and distribution of specialized ground tissues. I'll see you next with my vascular tissue video. Bye-bye.